Malignant hyperthermic syndrome is a genetically predetermined adverse response to several drugs that are commonly used in anesthetic practice. In particular, the volatile anesthetics and neuromuscular blockers, especially succinylcholine, have been implicated in the triggering of the syndrome. Its relative and frequent occurrence makes it uh, unlikely that the practicing anesthesiologist would ever have any clinical experience with it. The purpose of our film is to review the clinical syndrome of malignant hyperthermia and discuss in some detail newer uh, treatment modalities available to the practicing anesthesiologist. There have been recent advances in the understanding of the pathophysiology of malignant hyperthermia that have led to the development of a relatively specific therapy, that is, intravenous dantrolene sodium. Dr. Thomas Blank will discuss with us the uh, subcellular aspects of the pathophysiology and treatment of malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia is a disorder of skeletal muscle. In the susceptible patient, the volatile anesthetics and the muscle relaxant succinylcholine are known to disrupt the flux of calcium in the muscle. The myofibrils of the muscle are exposed to greater amounts of calcium and therefore generate more and continuous tension, leading to the rigidity that is seen in the malignant hyperthermic patient. The first illustration demonstrates the initiation of the excitation contraction mechanism in skeletal muscle. Calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and in the malignant hyperthermic patient, more calcium is available to the myofibrillar proteins, resulting in increased tension and increased heat generation. In the patient, we see this by an elevated temperature and increased rigidity. When dantrolene sodium is administered to these patients, less calcium is released from muscle stores, resulting in decreased tension and heat generation. In the patient, we see this as a reversal of rigidity and a decrease in his temperature. The clinical manifestations of these physiological principles of malignant hyperthermia can be demonstrated in the pig model. We are now going to show you the triggering of a malignant hyperthermic episode and some aspects of its treatment, which include the administration of dantrolene sodium. This is a pig that we have previously shown to be uh, susceptible to malignant hyperthermia by an exposure to halothane. Today, we have anesthetized this pig with sodium thiopental through an ear vein, and the animal is now being ventilated with oxygen and being kept asleep with thiopental. We have monitored the animal with an electrocardiogram, and uh, we have placed an arterial catheter in the femoral artery. The animal's limbs are now quite limp, and the skin color is pink. We will now expose the pig to a halothane anesthetic and observe the physiological changes. Prior to the administration of 3% halothane, we observed that the animal's baseline intramuscular temperature is 37.6 degrees centigrade and expired CO2 concentration in percent is 3.12. The blood pressure in this lightly anesthetized animal is 230 over 170 and the heart rate is 130. The animal's respiratory rate at the present time is 10 per minute. I'm going to uh, let the halothane enter the system now at 3% concentration. The pig is now receiving the halothane. We should begin to see some physiological changes in the heart rate, the respiratory rate, and the temperature. The uh, entitled CO2 should also begin to go up along with all of these other parameters. The animal is receiving the halothane. He's beginning to show some of the changes of malignant hypothermia. In particular, all of the muscle is being activated. And these limbs are twitching. All the muscles in all the limbs are beginning to twitch. His respiratory rate is now increasing. The anesthetic uh, bag is becoming warmer, although we haven't seen any changes in the uh, temperature on the intramuscular monitor. The skin is also starting to become engorged, and you, although I'm not sure you can pick it up in the camera, we can begin to see an increased flush in the skin at this moment. The lower limbs have become quite stiff and are showing all the changes that you see in a malignant hyperthermic episode. 
The animal's thoracic compliance has decreased markedly, making it necessary for assisted ventilation. Heart rate currently is approximately 180, and blood pressure has risen to 260 over 200. The intramuscular temperature has risen from 37.6 to 41 degrees centigrade. I'm going to discontinue the anesthetic, and we're going to begin our resuscitative measures. We now are instituting the resuscitation. The animal is quite stiff. We're going to begin giving 100% uh, oxygen, sodium dantrolene. I got it. I got it. Sodium dantrolene, and uh, wrap the animal in ice. All limbs are now quite stiff. Okay, we're going to wrap the animal in ice now. And the idea is to cover as many parts of the patient or animal as you can. We have begun the administration of sodium dantrolene. For a pig this size, 80 kilograms, we will need approximately 4 milligrams per kilogram, or 320 milligrams of sodium dantrolene. Each vial contains 20 milligrams. In order to reconstitute that amount of dantrolene, three of us have to be working full speed in order to get it into the animal in time. One of us will reconstitute the vial with 60 cc's of sterile water. Another one will draw up the syringe and hand it to the third person who will administer it to the animal. Heart rate has decreased from 180 to 140. The temperature has dropped to 38.5. It had previously been 41. The blood pressure is maintained now to almost control levels. And for this pig, it's 180 over 120. The animal has become limp again, especially in the upper limbs. The lower limbs are less stiff than they were before but still not back to normal. We're continuing the hyperventilation with pure oxygen, and we'll hold off any further administration of dantrolene until we can assess the present status of the animal. You can see by the, uh, looking at the CO2 absorber on this machine, which was freshly charged at the beginning of this demonstration, that the animal has produced a significant amount of carbon dioxide in the acute crisis. Uh, the respiratory rate did increase to some degree before we instituted uh, hyperventilation. The end tidal CO2 production during the acute crisis was in excess of 15% of the expired gases. With hyperventilation, we've managed to bring it down into the neighborhood of 35 to 4%. The animal is beginning to respire spontaneously at this time. After the institution of appropriate therapeutic measures, uh, the animal appears on its way to uh, complete recovery we can see that uh, we've already had profound relaxation of this uh, rigid left uh, forelimb, and I expect uh, this relaxation to progress through the rest of the animal. The heart rate has come down to uh, 135. Blood pressure is near normal at 160 over 120. End tidal CO2 concentration is now uh, approximately 3% with assisted ventilation. Intramuscular temperature is now 38.5 degrees. Looks like the animal is going to do well, but the recovery period will take some hours. This is the pig some 30 hours after the episode depicted earlier. You can see there's almost a complete recovery. There is no evidence of neurological deficit and minimal muscular discomfort.